uh, talk about uh, where we are in the uh, homework. So, um, so that's uh, posted here. So that's pretty clear. So uh, we have a, a homework that's due um, tonight. Okay. So um, I, it was originally due Saturday, but I moved that back. So um, it's uh, last Saturday it was due, but I moved that back to tonight. So it's due at midnight tonight. And then um, this homework on the chain rule, which we're going to be talking about extensively today. We started it last time, but uh, we'll complete that today. That's due. Um, that's a long homework. So um, just like this product and quotient rule. So I don't have that due until Tuesday of next week. And then uh, I don't know if we'll get to it today, but we'll, we're also going to talk this week about what's called implicit differentiation, which uh, relies a lot on the chain rule. And uh, so it's closely related to the chain rule. And so um, there's a homework um, uh, due for that. Okay, uh, not till next week. Um, all of this is uh, leading up to uh, this announcement uh, that is over here on the um, uh, right hand side of, of the screen. So um, I posted the uh, sample for uh, test number two. Uh, and so, uh, so you can start uh, looking at that and uh, that test will be on Tuesday, April 13th, okay? So that's going to work like test number one worked, the same format, right? It will be, uh, I post the test, and then you will email me back uh, your written answers, right, um, in PDF form that I will grade. So it's just the identical process. Um, and that, so that will be posted on April 13th. I'll give more details for that, uh, uh, you know, more time details and, and, and the due date and so forth later, but... Uh, but it'll start on Tuesday, April 13th. And, um, uh, and so the sample test is now posted and that includes through implicit differentiation. So this is really the last homework, uh, uh, this one that's posted that will be on the test, but, but we will have probably, we will be past implicit differentiation by the time of the test. We'll be talking about other things uh, by that time. It's just that, that those other things will not be on the test. So this is the final homework for the, uh, this is the final homework for uh, the test. Okay, so oh, we got a lot more people here logged on now. So I hope most people sort of heard what I just said. It was mostly in relation to uh, this announcement, right? Sample, sample test number two is posted and because the test, the next test, test number two will be Tuesday, April 13th um, in the same format as test uh, number one. And here is your homework list and you've got a homework due tonight um, at midnight. So uh, be careful that you uh, finish that um, uh, by tonight at midnight. Oh, I have a lot of people I see on here that um, I need to um, uh, give a chance to respond in class at some point. So I may call on you at some point. So if you were here right now, make sure you stay logged on so I can um, um, maybe ask you a question and then give you your class participation check mark. So uh, you can keep a, a high class participation grade like Angel. Uh, Cardona, I need to ask you a question. So at some point today, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, when I get the chance, Nadim, uh, 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 Mr. Vidiani, uh, you also. So make sure you're paying attention. So uh, when it comes time for me to ask a question, I can call on you and then you can get uh, that nice uh, class participation score. Um, that's an easy grade um, uh, to make. And there may be others that uh, I'll, I'll be looking to. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, do y'all have any immediate questions? Uh, before I, um, uh, I, I have something from the from that product and quotient rule homework that I want to mention, but um, uh, that's due tonight. But we talked about this uh, last time. But um, uh, but I want to give you a chance to ask me any questions that you want to ask me about that one. Any problems from that one on your uh, mind? No one's emailed me anything. I didn't look at the, um, I can look at uh, and see what questions have been missed uh, on this homework, but I forgot to do that uh, before class. So uh, there's nothing on immediately on my mind, except for two problems right at the beginning of the homework. And I think just the um, instructions there are a little bit weird. Is someone trying to ask me something? And I won't shut up. Damien? Oh, I'm sorry, my mic was on. Uh, oh, that's fine. I just was wondering if you were asking me a question. All right. So, uh, so let, I'm going to open this one um, and look at um, just one of the beginning problems here uh, uh, at the top. So not problem number one, 
Uh, but um, that one's that prop. Uh, this is from the product and quotient rule homework. But that prop that problem is really straight straightforward. So you do not need either the product or the quotient rule to help you do uh, problem number one. Now you do need to convert those uh, radicals into fractional exponents, right? So you do need to write the square root of x is x to the one half power, and you need to write the cube root of x is x to the one third power so that you can use the power rule uh, to differentiate, but you do not need to use the product or the quotient rule. Now, um, the next question and the third question are kind of the same. So let me look at the third one here. Um, it says, find the derivative of the function. So it's just a straightforward differentiation problem. Um, and there are a lot of those on the sample test <laughs> uh, that just say, by the way, because this is what we've been doing for a lot of the time, right? Uh, since test number one. So um, a lot of the problems on the sample test just say, um, you know, differentiate this function. That's the instruction. And so, um, uh, so you'll have a lot of problems like this one uh, on the sample test and then also on the test, right? Um, but this one has just one additional uh, 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 instruction here. It says differentiate the function, but, and then it says without using the quotient rule. So um, they're, they're kind of giving you a restriction here. Uh, do not use the quotient rule. It's, it's, that's kind of a funny uh, restriction, right? Because this homework is about the quotient rule. So, so they're telling you not to use the quotient rule on the homework that's about the quotient rule. Um, the reason that they're doing that is um, they is because um, the quotient rule is kind of complicated, right? So if you don't really have to use the quotient rule, um, uh, you should probably avoid it because it's you know it's kind of difficult and it's easy to make mistakes. So um, and there are plenty of uh, plenty of things that look like you need to use the quotient rule, but you don't really need to use the uh, quotient rule. So, and this is an example. So you can actually do this problem without the quotient rule. So that's why uh, that's why they have this instruction. I mean, you could use the quotient rule, but um, since you don't really have to, uh, it might be best to avoid it. Okay. Um, and so there's the problem. And we just want to find uh, the derivative, right? We want to find dy over uh, dx. Uh, uh, and see, this is a quotient. So, you know, it looks like it's a perfect setup for the quotient rule. And indeed, you, you could use the quotient rule if you just had to. But uh, you can avoid using the quotient rule for this particular quotient because notice you can rewrite the quotient a little bit to start with. This x to the fifth power, you can move that out of the denominator, not the two, but you can take the x to the fifth power and you can move that out of the denominator by changing the sign of the exponent. So, um, so you can rewrite this as three over two, you have to keep the, the three over two here, but then the x to the fifth power, if you pull that up, to the numerator, you can do that by changing the sign of the exponent. So you can write three over two x to the fifth as three a halves times x to the minus five power. Now, most times you wouldn't do that, right? Um, and uh, you know, people don't usually like negative exponents because they're a little bit mysterious. So uh, most people, you know, would try to avoid making this uh, rewriting this expression. But it's useful in this case because. Now to differentiate, we just have to use the uh, the power rule. We don't have to use the quotient rule. And the power rule says, oh, I can differentiate this just by bringing the minus five in front, right? So I would have minus five times three halves. This is supposed to be a times. So that's times uh, three halves. And then X to the, and then you subtract one from the minus five, right? So that will give you, be careful, that doesn't give you minus four, right? That gets you minus six. So you have minus three times three halves times X to the minus six power as the derivative. Uh, let's see, minus five times three halves. Well, that would be minus 15 halves. So you have minus 15 halves times X to the minus six power. And, um, and this is really an okay answer. But uh, if you again, if you don't like negative exponents, and uh, you know again, a lot of people don't, then you can take the uh, uh, the x to the minus six power, and you can uh, pull that back into the denominator along with the two, 
And then that negative six power will become positive six power. So you can rewrite this as minus 15 over 2x to the sixth power. I kind of like it written like this because that kind of looks like the original problem. If I leave it like this, which is okay, that is the derivative. But if I leave it like this, it doesn't, it's got this negative exponent and the original problem didn't have a, a negative exponent in it. So I, I, I've, I've been telling you, all right, I kind of like uh, my answers to look, although it's not really required, I kind of like my answers to look like my original expression. And so um, I think this would be kind of the preferred answer, but this answer is still correct. All right. So you see what, uh, 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 so see what, how that worked, right? We did not have to use the, we did, even though we were differentiating a quotient, we did not have to use the quotient rule. Let me show you another example of this um, slightly different one. So um, suppose I had, um, 3x to the third minus uh, 2x squared um, over uh, uh, plus uh, 3, and all of that over um, x squared. And again, we, we want to just differentiate that, right? So that's the, that's the instruction, is to differentiate this. Well, that looks like you're going to use the quotient rule, right? Because you have this, you know, this big ugly expression in the numerator, and then you have this uh, expression in the denominator. So you have a quotient here. So it looks like to differentiate this, the natural thing to do would be to use the quotient rule. And indeed, you could use the quotient rule, but you can actually avoid using the quotient rule here if you, again, try to rewrite the expression a little bit first before you uh, uh, think about differentiating. So see, you can, uh, uh, since you just have x squared in the denominator, you can uh, break this up into, before you differentiate, we haven't even differentiated yet. Before you differentiate, you can break this up into three separate um, fractions, all of them with denominator uh, x squared. So you can write three x squared, uh, I'm sorry, three x cubed minus two x squared plus three over x squared. You can write that as 3x cubed over x squared minus 2x squared over x squared plus, and then the 3 over x squared. And now you can reduce, I have to give myself a little room here. Now you can reduce um, these three fractions. 3x cubed over x squared, notice that reduces to uh, just 3x, right? Because the x squared and the x cubed will cancel to x. Uh, minus 2x squared over x squared, that becomes just um, minus 2 because the x squareds will divide out. And then, well, there's not going to be much you can do with the, uh, the last term. That's going to stay as 3 over x squared. Now, now we can think about differentiating. So if I differentiate now, let's see, how do I differentiate this? Well, it's, it's much easier. The, what's the derivative of 3x? That's easy. That's just 3, right? What's the derivative of minus 2? Oh, that's easy because that's a constant. So it has derivative 0. So it's not even going to be part of my derivative. And then now how do I de uh, differentiate 3 over x squared? Well, I have to remember that, oh, just like in this problem, Oh, 3 over x squared, that's the th same as 3 times x to the minus 2 power, right? I can take the x squared out of the denominator. And now you can differentiate this using the power rule. So bring the minus 2 down. So you have minus 2 times 3, and then x to the subtract 1 from the minus 2. So that gives you uh, minus 3. So we get what, three plus, well, the zero, we can drop that. Minus two times three is minus six, uh, x to the minus three. And now you can uh, bring the x to the minus three back into the denominator like I did in this problem. And you end up with minus six over x cubed. So here's your derivative, three minus six over x cubed. Um, and you did not, even though this was a, a quotient, the original expression was a quotient, you did not have to use the quotient rule um, to uh, differentiate this. So that was, that was their point of 
the, that was problem two and three uh, in that homework. They were just trying to remind you that, um, you know, you don't always have to use the quotient rule uh, when you're trying to differentiate a uh, quotient, okay? So you should kind of look at the, the expression first that you're trying to differentiate and decide, um, you know, uh, do I really need to use the quotient rule here or is there some way I can differentiate this uh, without, using the, uh, without using the quotient rule? Okay, um, all right. So uh, you may have gotten the answer right using the quotient rule, which is fine, but um, um, they were just trying to uh, make you a little bit more flexible, you know, in how you do differentiation, right? Um, okay. Um, any other um, questions there? So this was a long- Can I just have a quick question? Uh -huh, ben? So for the test, the upcoming test, um, uh -huh. you, you would rather us do, you would refer us to have the, the answer, like, you know, in the same format as the problems, right? Yeah, it's not like, I, you know, it's not like that's, uh, uh, you know, essential, right, <laughs> okay? That's just kind of my rule of thumb for simplifying my answers um, is I try to uh, make them look like the original expression if I can, okay? I mean, the important thing is to get um, an answer that is correct, okay? It's less important to get it uh, written in some sort of preferred form. And does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I'm just wanna making okay. sure. Thank so, you. so like on the test when you're, and there's a whole series of problems, you know, where it just says differentiate this uh, function or differentiate this expression. There's a whole lot of problems like that. Uh, just, um, um, you know, make sure that you get, you know, the first step right, right? That you get the derivative written down, something written down for the derivative that's correct, right? Because that's how you're gonna get most of the credit. And then if you, you know, then if you can rewrite it to make it look nicer, well, that's, you know, that's, that's cool, but, um, you know, not 100% essential for sure, right? Um, okay. okay, got it. So I, th I think when I post the answers uh, to the sample test, and that will, I won't post them for a while, right? But when I post the answers to the sample test, then you can see a little bit better, you know, kind of, you know, what I would think of as the, as the ideal answer. All right. Um, yeah, this is always a very uh, subjective thing of uh, how to simplify expressions. It, there's no, there's not even agreement on, on, on amongst mathematicians. That you know, it's kind of a a, a little bit of personal preference, I think. Um, okay. Um, all right. So well, uh, so this is the homework that's due tonight. So it's still due at midnight, right? So uh, so you still have time to complete it. I didn't uh, uh, see how many people had. Um, uh, had uh, essentially finished it before class. So if you've already finished with it, great. You know, uh, you can go on to the homework on the chain rule. Uh, otherwise, uh, try to get it done by, uh, uh, try to get it done by this evening. Um, okay, so I don't think I need to look at WebAssign anymore. Um, let's go back to our, uh, let's go back to our notes and, um, And last time we were talking about um, the chain rule, which is um, in some ways, this is easier than the product or the quotient rule. Well, I think it's easier than the quotient rule in some ways, but, um, and, and maybe the product rule too, but. Um, okay, wait. my but um but it's but it, it's conceptually I, I mean the formula is easier for the chain rule but uh conceptually it may be a little bit more difficult to understand uh how to use the chain rule so um so we just started that last time so let let me remind you what what we were doing so um so so we have the the product rule right um, uh, well, we have several rules for differentiation, but uh, uh, what we just were look, uh, uh, looking at, right, in, in this in tonight's homework is the product rule, right? So that helps us in uh, how to differentiate um, a function 
that you can think of as the product of two simpler functions, right? Or if you can think of your function's formula as the product of two expressions, then uh, the product rule will help you write down the derivative, right? Or similarly, if you have a, a function whose formula is the quotient of two simpler functions or the quotient of two expressions, you might think of it as uh, expressions instead of, uh, uh, of uh, formulas for functions, but either way, um, the quotient rule uh, you can use, right, to help you find the derivative of such a function. Um, now, so the chain rule is, it applies if you have a function that you can think of as the uh, composition, not the product or the um, uh, uh, quotient, but the composition of two simpler functions. And re so remember when you compose functions, uh, that operation is, uh, uh, is different from uh, multiplying functions or dividing functions. When you compose functions, that means you take uh, one function and you feed it as input to a second function. Uh, that function that we uh, uh, give as input, we like to refer that uh, to that informally as the inside function. And then the function that we're uh, putting the uh, inside function into, we like to think of that as um, the outside function. And so the chain rule says, oh, if you have a function that you can recognize is written in this form, the composition of two simpler functions, then it's easy to find the derivative of such a function. Um, and uh, in, in notice the derivative involves a product. You take the derivative of the outside function and you multiply it by the derivative of the inside function. So it's kind of, um, uh, kind of a simplified version actually of the product rule, right? Um, uh, 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 in this case, you just take the uh, derivatives of the two uh, uh, functions that you're composing and you're, you just uh, multiply them uh, together, okay? So, um, but the, the tricky part of using the chain rule is recognizing, the hard part of using the chain rule is recognizing when you have a function that is written as the composition of two uh, simpler functions. That's the hard part of using the chain rule. It's not actually applying the chain rule formula. It's just recognizing that, oh, I can even use uh, the chain rule, okay? So um, I, so what I was explaining to you last time at the end of the class is that there are really two situations, two key situations where the chain rule is going to apply. And if you can recognize these two key situations, then really a lot of the times you're gonna be able to apply the chain rule successfully, all right? So here's one of the, uh, key situations where you're going to use the chain rule. If you have an expression, an expression, maybe just uh, X by itself, but it could be a more complicated expression involving X raised to a power, okay? If you have that situation, then the chain rule is going to be your friend. That's what's going to allow you to take the derivative, okay? So notice that that is uh, uh, kind of related to the power rule, right? Okay, remember the power rule, you can use that when you had uh, just X raised to a power, okay? The power could be any number. Well, um, if you have not just plain X, but an expression raised to a power, okay? like x raised to a power, but an expression raised to a power, then you're going to be able to um, apply the, uh, the chain rule. And here's what the chain rule is going to look like in a situation like this, okay? So it's gonna look like the power rule. So to differentiate this function where we have an expression raised to a power, it's just that our expression is an X, right? It's a more complicated formula involving X, but it's an expression raised to a power. Then uh, you use essentially uh, the power rule. Um, you bring the, the exponent down, just like we do with the power rule, subtract one from the exponent, okay? But the other thing you have to remember, and this is where the chain rule is coming into play, 
you have to take the derivative of this expression that you're, that's inside parentheses that you're raising to the power, and you have to multiply that in. So what's the derivative of five plus uh, six X? That is uh, just six, right? The derivative of five plus six X is six. So I have to multiply in um, six. That's it. That gives you the derivative. So here's my simplified version of the derivative. I just multiplied the six times the two and wrote this as 12 times uh, five uh, plus six X. Uh, this is five plus six X to the first power. So um, I don't have to write this exponent again. If you want to, you can go ahead and multiply this out, but I guess you really don't have to. It would be 60 plus uh, 72 uh, X. All right, let's try that again, okay? All right, so um, let's look at finding the derivative of this uh, function, the square root of uh, 2x squared plus x. See, notice that kind of looks like um, this function, square root of x, right? Except uh, instead of just taking square root of just plain simple x, right? Um, now you're taking the square root of this more complicated um, expression. Not just plain x, but uh, 2x squared uh, plus x. Now, remember, how do you take the derivative of this uh, simple function, square root of x? Well, remember, you rewrite this as x to the 1 half power, and then you use the power rule. Well, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. We're going to rewrite this as 2x squared plus x, sorry, 2x squared plus x to the one half power. And again, I'm going to differentiate using the power rule, except the power rule is going to be a little bit more uh, complicated here. All right, so let's take the derivative. All right, so let's find uh, y prime. All right, so what do I do? Bring the one half down, just like you do with the power rule. So one half times two x squared plus x to the, what do you do with the exponent now? When you're differentiating someone? You subtract one. Yeah, so you'll just take uh, one half and subtract one from it, right? Okay. But Lance, now here's where things is, are slightly different, okay? Because uh, when if we were differentiating um, uh, x to the one half power, right? Uh, we at this point we'd essentially be finished, right? We would bring the one half down, and then we would subtract one from the exponent, so we would get one half x to the minus one half power, okay? And then we could simplify that, but that essentially would be the derivative, all right? But here's the difference here at Lance, okay? So this is the key thing. This is the, ch the chain rule, okay? Um, notice that since this expression is not just x, it's 2x squared plus x, now you have to multiply in, at the end here, you have to multiply in the derivative of this thing inside the parentheses, okay? Again, sometimes we call this the inside function inside these parentheses, right? So to finish the derivative, you have to multiply in the derivative of 2x squared plus x. So uh, notice here, you kind of have to take derivative twice, right? Um, you take the derivative of the whole thing, but then I have to multiply using the power rule, but then I have to multiply in the derivative of, again, 2x squared plus x. I multiply that in. Okay, so I'm kind of forming a chain of derivatives here. This is why this is uh, always uh, called the chain rule. Lance, what is the derivative of 2x squared plus x? 4x plus 1. Yeah, you can just do that easy, right? Okay, mm -hmm. fortunately, that's not a complicated uh, a, a derivative to find, right? Otherwise, we would have to stop and, and work on that, but that's pretty easy, right? That's just 4x uh, plus 1. There it is. Uh, notice you don't add it, you multiply it in. Wow, all right, so let's see what we got here. We have one half, and then we have um, two x squared plus x uh, to the minus one half. 
because one half minus one was minus one half, right? And then times four X plus uh, one. Now um, you can bring the, the two X squared plus X to the minus one half power. You can bring that down to the denominator. So I'm gonna write this as one over two uh, X squared uh, plus X to the positive one half power. You can bring that down to the denominator and change the sign of the exponent. So that becomes positive one half power. But what does it mean to raise a number to the positive one half power? Square root. Square root. So I'm going to rewrite that as square root. Uh, don't forget, this two is also in a denominator because you're multiplying by one half. So altogether, you get two times the square root of uh, 2x squared plus x in the bottom. And in the top, let's see, I have 1 times 1 times uh, 4x plus 1. So I guess that's just 4x plus 1. Ah, so there's my, uh, there's my final answer there uh, for, that, um, for that derivative. It's not that pretty. It's kind of a complicated answer, but at least we got it, right? Okay. Uh, and really didn't require all that much... Um, didn't require all that much work. All right, let's let's try that. Uh, let's try that once more. Okay, um, and this one looks terrible. So uh, we have x plus sine x to the fifth, uh, x plus sine x to the fifth power. So you know that looks like a really complicated function. It really is. Okay, um, probably wouldn't run across that function in uh, practice. Uh, very often, but um, um, this one's just kind of made up as an example, uh, but it's a good example. So, and we, so we want to find, uh, again, the, we just want to find the derivative here. So the key thing to recognize uh, in how you're going to find the derivative of this is you have a power, right? Okay. And it's not X to the fifth power. If it were just X to the fifth power, we would just use the power rule, right? And that would be easy to find the derivative. But it's just almost as easy as x to the fifth power. You just have this expression, uh, x plus sine of x. So you have this, not just x to a power, but you have an expression to a power. But that's not going to slow you down at all, okay? You can find the derivative here just almost exactly the same way as you would if it were just x to the fifth power. You're still going to use... The power rule, you just have one little extra step that you have to throw in there, okay? So I want someone to help me get started here. Uh, I won't have you all do the whole thing, but uh, maybe on just one step, okay? So um, um, uh, Angel, uh, can you tell me, Angel Cardona, can you tell me? So I want to find the derivative here. And so again, I'm going to use the power rule, right? Okay, because I have an expression raised to a power. So Angel, can you tell me where would I start? Just what, what would be the first thing I do here? Um, yeah, Angel, can you tell me what's the first thing that uh, I would, um, what's the first thing that I would do? I can't read your... Yeah, uh, well, we can apply the chain rule, Angel, right? But that, and that is what we're going to do. We're going to use the chain rule. But um, what, what would be the first step of the chain rule? The first step of the chain rule looks like the, um, it looks like just the first step of the power rule, okay? Because you have here a power. So what would be the first step of the power rule here? So when you're raising, when you're differentiating something raised to a power, what do you do first? What did we do? Uh, what did we do first up here when we were differentiating something raised to a power? What was the first thing that we did in this? Um, what was the first thing that we did in this prior example? Do you recall? In this example, what was the first thing that we 
what was the first thing that we did? I think I've lost. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, all of this is, yeah, Angel, so all of this is the process of differentiating, right? We are differentiating, but the question is, how do we carry that out, right? So what what do, in the power rule, what do we do with the power? So someone's going to have to remind Angel of, of the power rule. Can someone help Angel with the power rule there? What's the first step there, bring Donna? The front. What now? You bring it down to the front and then subtract it by one. Yeah, you bring down, that's right. You would bring down the five, right, okay, to the front, all right? So uh, so that, so this process we just do all the time in calculus because we really use the power rule a lot. So um, bring down the five and subtract one from it, okay? Bring down the five and subtract one from it. And if this were just X to the fifth power, if we didn't have that pesky sine of X thrown in there, that would be the end of this, right? We would just have the derivative would just be five times X to the fourth power and we would be done. But, but because this expression in the parentheses is not just plain X, it's a little bit more complicated than X, then this is where the chain rule comes into play. This, this part that I'm getting ready to do is the chain rule, all right? So um, uh, 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 what else do I have to multiply in here, right? What else do I have to multiply in here to make this uh, authentic? Nadim, are you there? Are you still there? Mr. Fidiani, are you still there? So you recall what we did in the, in the prior example? Right, we uh, in this example, right? Remember, we brought the one half down, we subtracted one from the exponent, and then we multiplied in something in, right? So here we bring the five down, uh, uh, we subtract one from the exponent, and now I have to multiply in uh, one extra thing here. Okay, so what's the what's the one extra thing I have to multiply in here to make this uh, valid? Ah, perfect. Yeah, you find. Yeah, you're right, Nadine. We have to find the derivative of this. We have to find the derivative of this expression, x plus sine of x. So we have another, uh, this is, see, this is uh, why the term chain rule comes into play. We have kind of a chain of derivatives we have to find here. So I have to find a second derivative, right? Okay, not a, <laughs> okay, I shouldn't, uh, I shouldn't use the term second derivative. That means something else. I have to find another derivative here, right? Okay, so I have to find the derivative of this uh, expression inside parentheses. So the Dean, can you help me with that? We want to find the derivative of x plus sine of x. So you just go one, term by term. So what's the derivative of x? That's the easiest thing to differentiate almost. You know, uh, you know, Nadine, what the derivative of x is? Just plain old x, uh, what is its derivative? Yeah, what's the derivative of x, Nadim? It's not x. What is just plain derivative of x? x is not its own derivative, so what is the derivative of x? Perfect, yes, it's one, yeah, all right? So you're a little bit unsure of that, but um, you're, that's correct, okay? So the derivative of x is one, but you also now have to go to the second term, and you have to find the derivative of sine of x, so what's the derivative of sine of x? Uh, now that we just have to remember, right? That's one of our trig functions. So we just have to remember what the derivative of sine, you just have to memorize that. Nadine, do you remember what the derivative of sine of x is? Can someone, uh, you're right, okay, so perfect. So there you're done, that's it, okay? Um, the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. So that's it. Uh, and I'm not even going to try to simplify this at all. I'm just going to leave the expression uh, written like this. So we have five times uh, x plus sine of x to the fourth power times one plus uh, cosine of uh, x. Okay, uh, that's it. So you're going to notice that a, a lot of these uh, these chain rule problems look a lot like the. they're really just kind of generalizations of the power rule. We're going to see another case, though, um, uh, where the chain rule applies. It's not really the power rule, but um, 
All right, let's look at this one. So um, let me show you the trick to this one. This one is just as easy as uh, the prior example. Um, we want to um, differentiate one over cosecant x plus one. Uh, that kind of looks like we would use the quotient rule here, right? But um, we're not going to use the quotient rule. So this is um, this is one of those cases where I'm going to avoid the quotient rule, even though my uh, uh, formula is a quotient. I'm going to avoid the quotient rule by rewriting this as uh, cosecant of x uh, plus one to the minus one power, right? Remember, when you raise the quantity to the minus one power, that means you're inverting it, right? Or you're taking the reciprocal. So cosecant of x to the minus one power is the same as one over uh, cosecant of x uh, plus one. So I'm going to uh, uh, pull a little trick here and rewriting the original fu function before I try to differentiate. Now I'm going to differentiate, but now this is just um, a power rule problem again, because here you have an expression. It's not just plain x. It's cosecant of x plus 1 raised to a uh, power. So what the power rule says is, oh, yeah, to differentiate this, I'll bring down the minus 1. So I have minus 1 times cosecant of x plus 1 to the minus 2 power because I subtract one from the minus one. So minus one minus one is minus two. It's not zero. Remember, you're subtracting, you're not adding. But then this is where the pesky chain rule comes in, right? Because this is not just x to a power. This is an entire expression raised to a power. So I have to take the derivative of this expression in the parentheses and multiply it in. And now I have to remember, ooh, what's the derivative of cosecant of x? Someone has to help me with that. What was the derivative of cosecant of x? Probably don't have that one memorized. I'm not even sure I remember it. Yeah, I think I do now. Okay. But does someone else remember? Got to leave myself some room because it's kind of lengthy. You remember what the, uh, can someone help me with the derivative of cosecant of x? What's the derivative of cosecant of x? Negative cosecant times cotangent. Perfect, yeah. It's negative cosecant times cotangent. So that's probably the, uh, the, uh, the, that's probably the trig function you're least likely to remember the derivative of is cosecant of x, okay? But this is correct. It's cosecant of x times cotangent of x. Now, I also have to differentiate the one, okay? But that's easy because that's a constant. So the derivative of one is zero. So... You can write plus zero there, but or you can just leave that off, right? So there is my um, derivative. All right, let's see. Uh, how can I rewrite this? Well, I can take the minus, I can take this minus times this minus, and that will give me plus. So the minuses will disappear. Of course, this zero, I can erase that. So the minuses will disappear. And then this cosecant of x plus one to the minus two power, I can move that into a, the denominator so that I can change this negative two to positive two. So I end up, I think, with cosecant x, cotangent x over, because I'm going to pull this into denominator, um, cosecant uh, of x plus one uh, squared. That minus two becomes plus two. When I bring that into the denominator. And I guess that's, I don't know, maybe we can simplify this further, but that seems like that is, uh, seems like that's pretty good uh, for uh, an answer there. Okay. Um, all right. Now, let me show you the other um, situation where the, uh, the other common situation where the chain rule is going to apply. Okay. Um, so it's not uh, 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 an expression raised to a power, but instead it's this situation where we have a trig function applied to a expression. So if you have um, just y equals cosine of x, not a complicated expression, but just x, then of course 
you just you can just memorize what the derivative is, right? The derivative of this is minus sine of x, right? Well, notice that this this function is quite similar. You have the cosine, but not just of x. You have cosine of this a little bit more complicated uh, expression, okay? Four uh, x squared plus three, so a little bit worse than x. Not much, but a little bit worse than x. And so, uh, let's see if we can find the derivative. So here's what you do. You uh, you differentiate just like you were differentiating cosine of x. Um, the derivative would be minus the sine of the 4x squared plus uh, 3. But here's where the chain rule comes into play. Because you were not just differentiating x, you were differentiating this more complicated expression you have to multiply in its derivative. So we have to, at the end here, again, form this chain of derivatives, thus the chain rule, by multiplying in the derivative of 4x squared plus 3. Okay, so the derivative of 4x squared plus 3, that's pretty easy, right? Um, after you've uh, done that basic differentiation homework, right? This one is uh, a pretty straightforward. Uh, Lewis, you're, uh, oh, no. Uh, let me see, not, not Lewis, sorry, Lewis, I, I'll, I'll save you for, I'll save you for later, okay? <laughs> all right, um, all right, well, I've run out of names here. Everyone's so good on answering. I've run out of uh, uh, people to pick. So anybody just, just tell me quickly here, what's the derivative of, um, what's the derivative of 4x squared plus three? 8x. 8x, right, okay, so. That's all you have to, to finish this off, you just have to multiply in 8x. So I guess we get something like minus 8x uh, sine of uh, 4x uh, squared plus 3. Okay, let me, uh, uh, let me ask you guys one, all right, just to give you all a little bit of practice. And before we look at our final uh, a little bit more complicated examples there. So I want y'all to try this one, very similar to uh, uh, this example. Uh, try tangent of seven minus two X, right? So that's almost the same as tangent of X, but not quite, right? You have seven minus two X instead of just plain X. So what would be the derivative of tangent of seven minus two X? You'll have to look and remember uh, what's the derivative of tangent. So just take a couple of minutes there. Won't, it won't take long. Again, you can use this as, as your, that prior problem as your example, right? Okay, so let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can write this one down quickly. So, the derivative of tangent of seven minus two x. All right. So, where do we start that one? What do we have to put into our derivative? Um, what do we have to put into our derivative first?
Differentiate tan. Yeah, differentiate the tangent, right? So, uh, 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 Donna, what's the uh, what is the derivative of the tangent? Sine x over cosine x. Uh, well, tangent is sine x over cosine x, right? But uh, uh, but what was the derivative of tangent? Derivative of tangent. So that one's kind of tricky. It's just one you just have to memorize. Um, does someone someone there remember it? Ah, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, okay. So Zachary and Nadim. Yeah. Uh, thank you. So Donna, it's secant squared. You just have to you just have to recall that. Um, yeah, so you get secant squared. That's the derivative of the tangent. And you're going to keep the 7 minus 2x, okay? You're going to keep the 7 minus 2x. So this is uh, uh, just kind of the start of, uh, of that derivative. But, and, and, and a lot of people will stop here, but they make the mistake. They forget that, oh, because this is not just tangent of x, this is tangent of 7 minus 2x. I have to finish this off by multiplying in the derivative of the seven minus two X. That's where the chain rule comes into play. So I have to multiply in, a, uh, I have to add in one, not add in, multiply in one extra derivative. What is the derivative of seven minus two uh, X? Minus two. Minus two, right, Daniel. Okay, so there you go. Just multiply in the, just multiply in the minus two. Uh, if you want to, you can put the minus two in front. Um, not really necessary, but you can put the minus two in front. So you have um, minus two times uh, secant squared of uh, seven minus two uh, X, okay? And that, that's it, right? Um, okay, so um, those are the really the, uh, if you can remember those two situations, those are really the two situations where the chain rule, two key situations where the chain rule is going to apply, okay? Where if you have an expression raised to a power, not just x to a power, but an expression raised to a power, then uh, you will use the chain rule in combination with the power rule. Or the second situation is what we just saw in these two examples. If you have a trig function applied to an expression, trig function, like cosine of x applied to an expression, not just uh, 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 not just cosine of a uh, plane x or a uh, uh, tangent of plane x, but um, uh, uh, cosine of an expression or tangent of an expression or sine or any other trig function of an expression, right? Uh, then the chain rule again will apply. Uh, you'll just uh, differentiate your trig function, but you have to multiply in at the end the derivative of uh, the expression in parentheses, okay? All right, now we've got some more complicated uh, uh, examples with the chain rule, uh, but uh, uh, so we're going to look at those in just a second, uh, but um, let's take a break right now uh, for a few minutes before we, uh, before we gear up for these uh, last few uh, trickier examples, okay? Um, all right, so we'll come back here a little bit after uh, in about five minutes, right? Maybe 1231 or 1232, um, if we're being precise. Um, and um, we'll look at uh, 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 the remaining examples of the uh, chain rule. So let me pause the room. Okay, I'm back. Um, let's um, resume here. Let me look and see what we've got. Um, we've got left on our list. Okay. All right. So, um, so again, these are just, um, what's coming up here are just uh, some, uh, a little bit more complicated examples with the, um, uh, with using the chain rule, but the, but the ideas are uh, just the same as in those prior examples. It's just that the um, uh, expressions, uh, I mean, the, uh, Functions are a little bit more complicated, and, uh, and so the answers are going to turn out to be um, a little bit more complicated as well. So we have to be a little bit patient now when we're differentiating these uh, uh, these uh, somewhat more complicated functions, and uh, and we have to be confident that if we're applying the rules properly, 
uh, the, you know, whatever rules are required, the product rule or the quotient rule or the, uh, the chain rule uh, that, uh, uh, that ultimately will, will have a valid answer, okay? So, uh, because um, there may be uh, lots of steps. So, uh, so you just gotta be uh, careful in your steps, right? Try to be careful in your algebra, uh, try to be patient in getting uh, uh, all the steps, uh, um, uh, all the rules applied properly and all the steps inserted properly. Uh, and, uh, and if you do that, then um, you'll, you know, you'll eventually, uh, again, have a valid answer, right? Okay. Um, so uh, try to exercise some, uh, some uh, patience and some care um, uh, when you're um, differentiating these complicated functions like cotangent of uh, um, five plus six X squared. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, the first thing to notice here is, uh, uh, just like in, uh, uh, the prior two examples, you've got, uh, uh, trig function in this case, cotangent applied to, uh, this expression. Okay. And it's not just plain old cotangent of X. It's cotangent of something a little bit more complicated than X. Right. So, Hopefully you'll recognize quickly there, um, you know, maybe not just after two examples, but after you've done some of your homework problems, right? Um, hopefully you'll recognize quickly or pretty quickly, uh, 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 you know, by the time of the test, right? That, oh, this is going to be a chain rule problem because I have a trig function applied to this uh, 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 longer expression than just plain X. So I, I know the chain rule is going to uh, come into play here, right? Okay, so uh, let's try to start that process. So um, just like in those prior two problems, we'll, we have to remember what the derivative of cotangent is, okay? So that's just something you've got to memorize. Um, uh, so that, and, but if you've got it memorized, then you can just instantly write it down, right? So uh, you all remember what the derivative of cotangent was? You may have to help me. I'm not sure I've got it memorized. Someone remember what the derivative of um, uh, of cotangent was? It's one of the co-trig functions. So remember that um, that is going to uh, mean that's going to involve a negative. Uh, uh, that's one thing to recall. All right. Uh, uh, derivative of cosine is minus sine. Derivative of cotangent is going to be negative, and derivative of cosecant also is going to be negative. Uh, Kevin, you said it's cosecant. That's that's close. All right, uh, it's um, it, it's almost uh, cosecant, but it, uh, you forgot one part there. It's uh, it's uh, minus the cosecant, but something else. Can someone add the something else there? Yeah, it's got to be squared. Right? Okay, so uh, don't forget the square, or that's gonna uh, uh, mess things up. All right, so yeah, uh, so so the derivative of tangent was secant squared. The derivative of cotangent is minus um, cosecant squared. Okay, and then just keep all of this uh, uh, to start with. So you're still going to have um, the five plus the six x uh, squared. Okay, but now this is again where the chain rule comes into play because you have this more complicated expression that you're taking the cotangent of. So you have to finish off this derivative by multiplying in something extra, okay? And that something extra is the derivative of this expression, five plus six x squared. Ooh, so we're gonna have to stop here for a moment and I have to remember, wow, what is the derivative of five plus six uh, x squared, right? Okay, because that's what I have to, um, that's what I have to multiply in here uh, at the end, okay? All right, so notice here now we have, a, this is kind of a second chain rule problem um, uh, uh, involved because in find, in this uh, uh, expression, you have five plus six X squared, right? Okay, so how would we find the derivative of five plus six X squared. That's a power, right? Okay. There's no trig function here, but this is a power. So how do we go about finding the derivative of this power? Can someone tell me what to, how to start there?
So whenever you're finding the derivative of a power, what do you what do you do? All right, so Malcolm says, uh, oh, I see Malcolm. So uh, uh, you're gonna go a, a roundabout way. Uh, Malcolm suggests um, actually multiply this out. All right, and um, first, all right. So he says, go ahead and multiply out five plus six X times five plus six X. Malcolm, you could definitely do that. And uh, and so you can, you can definitely multiply uh, uh, five plus six X times itself. And, uh, and you would get, you know, 25 plus something plus something X squared. Uh, um, and, and then you could, and then you could take the derivative, Malcolm. So, um, so that is one method. Okay. But Malcolm, that's kind of the long, that's kind of the roundabout method. We have a shorter way that we can find the derivative of five plus six X squared without actually multiplying in um, five plus six X times five plus six X. <laughs> okay, Malcolm, you, you said it's a simpler way for me. No, it's not. All right, I mean, it's not going to be the simpler way because uh, let me show you why. Uh, what if this were five plus six X and it were raised to the 10th power? So suppose we had gotten really uh, mean and we had put, um, if, I can get, if I can get this to write, go away screen. If I had written, um, I don't think I can get it to write here. Suppose, well, let me just tell you. Uh, suppose we had um, five plus six x to the tenth power, Malcolm, instead of five plus six x squared. Okay. Uh, then there's no way that you would be able to uh, take the five plus six x, not in a reasonable amount of time, anyway. Okay. There's no way you'd be able to uh, multiply out five plus six x times five plus six x times five plus six x ten times. Right. See what I'm saying? Um, so if, if that exponent were a t were a ten instead of a two, th this this method would be doomed. Okay, it would just it would just take you too long. But you could still find the derivative of five plus six x to the tenth power just as easily as you can find five plus six x squared. Okay, um, you have to remember the power rule. Okay, see you have a quantity raised to a power. The power rule says, how do you find the derivative of a quantity raised to a power? What do you do, Malcolm, with the uh, the two? <laughs> no, not not split it. See, if I had if I had x squared, right? Not five plus six x squared, but if I had x squared, that's a, a quantity raised to a power. To find the derivative, what do you do with the two? What does the power rule always say? Someone needs to remind Malcolm he's having, uh, you know, he's having uh, a, a, a temporary amnesia here since uh, since I'm asking him. Otherwise, he would know it immediately. So someone remind Malcolm of, of what the power rule says. Move the exponent into the front. Yeah, move the exponent in front, right, Malcolm, right? So you bring the... You bring the two down, you see, okay? You bring the two down, right? Okay? And subtract one from it. So that's how we're going to find the derivative of five plus uh, six X squared, right? Bring the two down, right? Okay? And so let's do that. Uh, let me do it inside the parentheses over here because that's where I need the derivative, right? So I'll have two times five plus six X to the one power now because you subtract one. But, okay, <laughs> but we're not finished with that because this is not X squared. This is five plus six X squared, right? So we have to multiply in the derivative of five plus six X. See, uh, this is, again, this is where the name chain rule comes from. Notice you're building up this chain of derivatives. You took the chain, you took the derivative of cotangent that was cosecant squared, right? Now you take the derivative of five plus six X squared. 
using the power rule, right? But then you have to remember, oh, because th that wasn't just x squared, that was five plus six x squared. I have to multiply in the derivative of five plus six x. What's the derivative of five plus six x though? Just plain old five, just this part, six, right, okay? So at the end here, we have to multiply in this uh, six, okay? See, notice there we use the chain rule twice, right? Um, uh, uh, when we uh, took the derivative of the cosine, uh, uh, of the cotangent, I mean, we had to multiply in the derivative of five plus six x squared. Well, so we started the derivative of five plus six x squared, but since that was a uh, five plus six X, not just X squared, I had to multiply in again, the derivative of the five plus six X, which was six. Uh, so finally there altogether is the, uh, altogether there is the derivative. We're finished there, okay? So, um, oh, I don't know, you can rewrite this as what? Minus 12 times uh, five plus six X, um, and then, uh, uh, oops, yeah, and then cosecant uh, squared of five plus six x squared. Ooh, it looks like a mess there, all right? Well, it is kind of messy, but it wasn't hard to uh, find at all, right? We really did very little algebra there uh, uh, to find this derivative, okay? Uh, we just applied um, uh, the chain rule a couple of times, right, okay, um, to get that. Uh, derivative. Let's look at the next one. Y'all make a suggestion for me, okay? So I want to differentiate 5x, uh, uh, this is times, right? Uh, square root of 2x squared plus x. So when I look at that, um, what rule sort of jumps out at you that you're going to have to, um, uh, that you're going to have to use to uh, differentiate this? So think about the rules that we have, right? We have product rule, we have quotient rule, we have chain rule. When you first look at this expression, what's sort of the first thing you notice that's involved in that expression? Different people might notice different things, but, um, but if you were looking at that, what's maybe one thing that uh, 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 immediately uh, 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 sort of strikes you there? Uh, with that um, expression. Colin, let me ask you, if you're looking at that Colin, 5x times square root of 2x squared plus x, you're thinking about what differentiation rules can I apply here or what steps, differentiation steps can I uh, take here to differentiate that? What, what might be something you notice really quick there? Well, one of the first things I do is try and get rid of the things in the square root. Uh, when you say try to get rid of the things in the square root, so, so the uh, first thing that you're thinking of there is, oh, there's a square root here, okay, right? So yeah, that might, that might be one thing that most people would notice immediately is, uh, yuck, I have a square root, okay? So uh, that's a little bit intimidating. And so in calculus, how do we normally deal with square roots? What do we do? How do we rewrite those, Colin? Oh, right, as fractions. As fractional exponents, right? Actually, so you exponents. could rewrite this as 5x uh, uh, and then times uh, 2x squared plus x to the one half power. Okay, so um, so that that might be what that that may be a really good place to start is uh, uh, rewriting the square root. Okay, so that's fine. All right, uh, but that really hasn't there. We haven't really done any differentiation, right? I just rewrote the. I just rewrote the formula, 
okay? But I haven't really attempted to start the differentiation yet, Colin, okay? So when you start the differentiation, you're going to have to, um, when you start the differentiation, you're going to have to use, you know, one of your derivative rules, right? Okay. And so uh, what else there sort of, um, uh, would you sort of key on there to help you pick uh, how you're going to proceed? I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it really easy. I'm going to make it really obvious for you. I'm going to write something in here. Is it going to be, the, there's the 5x part and then there's the the other bit, the multiplication between Multipl two. Yeah, there's multiplication there, right? Okay, you've got 5x times the 2x squared plus x to the one half power, right? Okay, and so uh, of, of course uh, that times there is a product, right? So that would suggest to us, oh, we're gonna have to use what? Product rule. The product rule, right, okay. So th yeah, that's what I was trying to get you to, that's what I was trying to get you to focus on. Yeah, is this is a product, okay? You've got, uh, you've got the five X, that part, and then multiplied by this part, right? Okay, so this formula is formed as a product. If, uh, you know, if it were just, you know, two X squared plus X to the one half power, that would be one thing, right? Okay, but uh, this is a little bit worse because we have a product. So, uh, so we would probably start here by, or almost certainly, in fact, we would start here by, oh, trying to use the product rule. Okay. All right. So um, you guys have to help me with the product rule, right? So uh, you're going to have to help me remember uh, uh, the product rule and what that says. Okay. So um, can someone help me with the product rule here, right? So how does the product rule work? What do I do? Remember, that's where you have these alternating um, derivatives, right? Damien, Damien, are you there, Damien? You were there earlier. Can you help me oh. with the, the product rule? Oh. This one, the G. Oh. Yeah. So, what do I do when I apply the product rule here? What, I mean, in general, how does the product rule work? You times it. The you uh, moved the one half over. What now? You already moved one half over. Or I, did you? You well, don't do anything. Well, that's yeah. the but the one moving the one half down is part of the that's part of the power rule. Okay, right. So we'll get to that, but but we're thinking about the product rule first. Okay. Hmm. So how does the product rule work? So this is from that. This is from tonight's homework, right? So when you hmm. want to differentiate a product, right? How do you uh, how do you pull that off? You times it. That's a. Uh... I'm confused here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, but but as soon as you hear, you're gonna you're you're gonna say, oh, I knew that, right? Okay. Um, so someone else there, uh, you you guys got to help Damien with the product rule. All right. So uh, who remembers the product rule there? Okay. Daniel, do you remember the product rule? Uh, find a derivative inside the bracket. Find the, I don't, well, you, you're calling these brackets? Um, yeah. Yeah, these I'd call parentheses, but that's okay. All right. But no, no. Yeah. Uh, even before that with the, the product rule, right? Remember, how does the product rule work, right? When you've got two things multiplied together and you want to find the derivative, there's kind of this little um, uh, interchange game that you play, right? What do you... What do you do there? Okay, now now y'all are staring at me there because y'all forgotten the product rule, which is uh, uh, you know on tonight's homework, right? And that's very that's very basic. So <laughs> someone who remembers the product rule has to uh, uh, get me started. Don't worry about saying it perfectly. Just uh, 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 just kind of give me a rough description, right, of how the how the product rule works. It's a uh, f of x times the derivative of g of x plus g of x times the derivative of fx. Yeah, so Lance, what you're saying is uh, when I have two things multiplied together, right, I have to take uh, the derivative of one of them, right, and then uh, multiply it by the second one and then switch that, right? Uh, 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 take the derivative of the uh, first one and then keep the, uh, I mean, uh, keep the first one and multiply by the derivative of the second one, right? Yes. Y'all remember, remember that now? Is that now that sounding familiar, right? The product rule? Daniel, now do you remember that? 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, but, but, wait, wait a minute, Daniel. Help, help me again here. So, what Lance said was, uh, 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 you're going to uh, switch taking derivatives, right? Okay. Uh, you're going to switch taking derivatives. So let's start by taking the derivative of the 5x first. See, that's one of the things that's multiplied, right? So what, what's the derivative of 5x? 5. 5, right? And then, so you write down the uh, 5, and then you keep, so that's a relief. We just, uh, first year, we keep the 2x squared uh, plus x to the 1 half power, right? Okay. Then you add in, Keep the 5x, right? Keep the 5x, and then take the derivative of the uh, uh, the second part, the 2x squared plus x to the 1 half power, okay? Right, so you interchange taking derivatives, right? That's the product rule. So I know y'all you have already practiced that one, so uh, uh, maybe you forgot the name of it, but that's called the that's called the product rule. Wait, but Daniel, we have to finish this off, right? So I keep the 5x, and now I have to multiply in the derivative of this second part, 2x squared plus x uh, to the 1 half power. Ooh, that's ugly, right? But um, I think I can do that. So what is the derivative of 2x squared plus x to the 1 half power? How do you start that? So just this part, how do you start taking the derivative? See, that's a power, right? So whenever you have a power, how do you start taking the derivative of that? So Damien tried something there, but uh, but uh, 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 but to start the process, you don't have to make it uh, too complicated, right? If you've got a power and you're trying to take the derivative, how do you start that off? Anytime you've got, see, if this were if this were just x to the one half power, and you wanted to take the derivative, how would you start that? Bring one uh, one over two to the front and multiply with x and minus one. Yeah, so you do the same thing here, Daniel. Bring the one half down, right? Times the two x squared plus x. Uh, now to the subtract one from this, so that will give you then minus one half. Okay, but uh, 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 now the uh, the other thing you have to remember though is. What was inside the parentheses here, what was raised to the one half power was not just x. It was 2x uh, squared plus x. So I have to further multiply in the derivative of 2x squared plus x. See, if you were just differentiating x to the one half power, you could just bring the one half down, subtract one, and you'd be done. Okay, But since it's not just x to the one half power, it's 2x squared plus x, you have to finish this off by multiplying in the derivative of 2x squared plus x. What is the derivative of 2x squared plus x, though? For, uh, 4x plus 1. Yeah, for, that's easy. That's just 4x plus 1, okay? Ah, finally, that's it. Wow, what a big, uh, what a big expression there, right, for the answer, okay? We have all of... Um, we have all of this is the derivative of um, 5x times square root of 2x squared plus x. Okay, so here we get a messy derivative. Sometimes when you take derivatives, your, um, uh, your derivatives are simpler than your original function. But sometimes when you take derivatives, the derivatives get more complicated than uh, the original function. If you want to, you can uh, simplify this a little bit. The, the one half powers, you can rewrite those as square roots. So we would have five times the square root of uh, two x squared plus x. And then this one is, remember this is a minus one half power. So you can pull that into the denominator. So I get, let's see, five x times one half, that's five x over two. And then times, I can bring this into the denominator. So I have one over 
all of this to the one half power, but that's square root. So I have one over square root of two X squared plus X. And then you still have the four X plus one uh, multiplied in there uh, at the end. So I guess if, uh, to finish this, we would have five times the square root of two X squared plus X plus um, five X times four X plus one. That's in the top. And in the bottom, we have the two and the square root of two uh, X squared plus X. Wow. So it looked kind of ugly, but it's really not that much algebra involved here, okay? Right? Um, uh, uh, the, the differentiation rules really make it pretty easy to write down um, this, uh, uh, at least this initial derivative, okay? The simplification's a little bit uh, uh, complicated, not much, all right? But the derivative rules make it very easy just to write down an initial uh, answer for our um, for our derivative. What now? What differentiation rules did we use? We had to use the product rule. Don't forget we have a product here, so we use the product rule. And then, as part of finding that uh, derivative of that square root of two x squared plus x, we had to use the we had to use the chain rule. Okay. So this is a combination of both the product rule and uh, the chain rule. Well, let's look at this one, okay? So um, actually, let's try this one. Then we'll come. This one's a little bit messier. Let's try this. Um, let's try this last example first. Then we'll come back to the previous one. Okay. So here we have five plus sine squared of pi of x. So Remember, sine squared means um, that you're taking the sine of pi of x and you're going to square that, okay? So remember, with trig functions, when we're squaring trig functions, we can write the exponent above the uh, trig function name uh, instead of having to use the uh, parentheses to, uh, 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 to do the square, okay? But... These two expressions mean the same thing. Um, it's a little bit easier to understand how we're going to differentiate writing it like this, however. Okay. All right. So let's see if we can take the derivative of five plus uh, sine of uh, pi of x uh, squared. All right. Now, here you've got uh, 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 the five added in. So you can just, uh, to, to differentiate this, you can just go term by term. So you can uh, first find the derivative of the five, and then you can find the derivative of this uh, sine pi of x squared. But what is the derivative of five? That's a constant. What's the derivative of a constant? Constant. Uh, uh, yeah, so for zero? any constant, a zero, right, Damien, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, there you just get zero. So you can just forget about the five and the derivative. It's not gonna show up in the, uh, it's not going to show up in the derivative of all, okay? All right, but Damien, the harder part is this part, right? Okay, that's the part that's um, that's the part that's trickier. So now we have to find the derivative of that sine pi of x squared. And here's what you, this is what it's crucial that you recognize, okay? Um, you have this expression, sine pi of x, that's just an expression, and it's raised to a power right? It's raised to a power. So you have this expression raised to a power. So how do we differentiate expressions raised to powers? So Damien, what do we do to start? I'm, I'm guessing you would uh, find it my guess is you would find the derivative of sine. But no. Uh, no? <laughs> yeah, You're, we're, we're going to do that, yeah, but not forward. first, okay? Because yeah. we have this expression raised to this power. So mm -hmm. we will start with what rule? The begins with a P. Just it's not product. 
<laughs> the pow- pow- yeah, you said it. Yeah, it's the power, power. rule. Right. Power. Yeah. Okay. So what does the power rule say we're going to do? What do you do with the power? Uh, See if this were if this were x squared, what what would you do with the 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 two? To differentiate, what would you do with the two? Move it down. Move it down. You do the same thing here. Okay. okay. Right. Do the same thing here. Right. This is just something a little bit more complicated than x raised to a power. Right. But it's the same form. It, it, you bring the two down, just like for this. Okay. All right. So. Damien, let's do that. So we bring the two down. All right, subtract one from it, right? So that just becomes all of that to the first power, okay? Uh, but unfortunately, we cannot quit here because uh, since this was not just x squared, but it was this expression squared, we now have to continue this by, what do we have to multiply in here? So this the, is the chain rule part. The, op, the derivative of sine? The derivative of sine pi of x, right. You have to multiply in the derivative of what's inside, what you're squaring, okay? What's inside this outer set of parentheses, right? Okay, so we have to throw that in now. All right, so now we have derivative of sine uh, pi of x. Too bad that's not just derivative of sine of x, right? Because I know that really easily but it's a little bit more complicated than just sine of x, but not much, okay? So, uh, Damien, what's the derivative of sine of, um, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. Cosine. So you have cosine of pi of x. So easy there, right? Okay. But Damien, we're not finished because mm -hmm. what else do I have to multiply in here? The one. Um, not a one, oh. I have to multiply in the derivative of pi of x. See, if that were just, if that were just sine of x, then I would just write cosine of x and I'd be done, okay? But this is sine of something a little bit more complicated than x, right, okay? Pi of x is just a little bit more complicated than x, right? So mm -hmm. I go ahead and write down cosine of pi of x, but then I have to multiply in the derivative of pi of x, Right. So see, it's that chain of derivatives, right? Um, mm -hmm. What's the derivative of pi of x? Pi. Pi, right. So we have to multiply in this extra pi. Oh, that's it. Okay. That's not too bad. Yeah. If I have two, this two, I guess I can multiply by this pi. So I have two times pi, and then I have sine of um, this pi of x and then times cosine of pi of x. That doesn't look too bad. Right. So not so bad. That's it. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's look at the let's look at the prior example. Let's see if we can uh, do that one really quickly. This one is uh, a little bit uh, uh, ugly because it's going to involve the quotient rule, right? Because you've got a uh, uh, you've got a quotient, <laughs> all right? So uh, darn it, uh, uh, we're gonna have to use, the, I don't think there's any way to avoid here using the, uh, the quotient rule. All right, so let's see if we can find this derivative using the quotient rule, but we have to remember the quotient rule, very similar to the product rule, but not quite the same. So remember the, in the quotient rule, you take the derivative of the top first times keep the bottom. The derivative of X though is one. So that's nice. And then you just keep that bottom, which is um, cube root of e minus 2x. Okay, remember e is the constant e. Uh, approximate, so this is a number. This isn't a variable. Uh, that's approximately uh, 2.718, right? It's similar to pi, right? It's a famous irrational number. Um, all right, minus then, now you have to keep the x, right, okay? And then you have to multiply in, here's the ugly part, you have to multiply in this derivative, okay? Ugh. So we're gonna have to stop uh, and uh, figure out what is the derivative of cube root of e minus two x, 
So, uh, so I'm going to leave some parentheses here because I've got to figure out the derivative of this denominator, right? So uh, we'll do that in just a second. And now, remember, in the bottom, though, the bottom is easy. What goes into the bottom of the quotient rule? The denominator squared, right? Yeah, it's the denominator squared. So you, so you just write that squared. So you, uh, just, just, you just essentially rewrite that cube root of e minus 2x and then you square it, okay? So you just leave it like that. Um, all right, now, uh, now, now we have, this is where the hard work is, though. Um, other than remembering the quotient rule, the hard part of this problem is I've got to figure out what is the derivative of cube root of e minus 2x, right? Because I have to fill that in to my quotient rule. So let's go up here and uh, let's think about that. So I have a cube root of e minus 2x, and I've got to find its derivative. So it looks like, um, as, it, you know, as the usual fashion in calculus, right, I'm going to take the cube root of e minus 2x, and I'll write that as e minus 2x to the one-third power. Cube root is one-third power. And uh, once I do that, now I, can find the, now I can find the derivative pretty easily. So the derivative would be, one third e minus two x to the one third minus one, subtract one, right? But this is not just x to the one third power. This is e minus two x to the one third power. So the chain rule comes into play. So I have to multiply in the derivative of e minus two x. But what is the derivative? Remember, e is a constant. So what's the derivative of e minus two x? That's not hard. Zero. Um, the derivative of e is zero, but what's the derivative of the minus two x? Minus two. Minus two. So you have a minus two multiplied in here. Ah, so there it is. It's um, one third times uh, e uh, 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 minus two x to the minus two thirds, and then you've got this extra minus two multiplied in there. Whew. That is, um, uh, I guess that's minus two over three um, times e minus two x to the two thirds power. I'm gonna bring the minus two thirds power down to the denominator that becomes positive two thirds power. The minus two uh, stays in the top. And then this, of course, this three stays in the bottom. So we have here uh, in the parentheses, finally, minus two over three. And you guys know if you want to rewrite e minus two x to the two thirds power, that's a fractional exponent. If you want to convert that back to radicals, do y'all know how to do that? So the third tells us that that's a cube root. So you would write cube root here. And then the two stays as an exponent. So you have e minus 2x uh, squared. So you keep the 2 as a power, and the third here, the 3 in the denominator tells you, oh, that's going to be uh, cube root. Wow. So you get a really ugly-looking um, formula out of this. Okay, I think we could simplify this a little bit more by hand, but... Um, but we're running out of time, so I don't want to spend the time uh, uh, doing that right now. Okay, So you get a, a really messy looking uh, uh, formula for the derivative. Well, that's not unusual using uh, quotient rule, right? Okay, uh, That you're going to get a messy uh, looking uh, derivative. Okay, uh, well, uh, so the last examples here are uh, just more practice, uh, except here they're asking us to find the second derivative instead of the instead of the first derivative okay let me do the very first one we've got just enough time this one is very short so i want to find the second derivative right so that means i have to differentiate twice let's start with the first derivative of course we have to find that before we can find the second derivative so see this is a power right of an expression so i'm going to use the power rule so you bring the three down there times the six times uh, uh, 3x plus 4, subtract 1 from the exponent, right? But 
before you get carried away, remember, this is not just X cubed, this is 3X plus 4 cubed. So you have to multiply in the derivative of 3X plus 4, which is 3. So you get here an extra 3 multiplied in. This one comes from the power. This one comes from the chain rule. So you get uh, uh, two factors of 3. Let's see, what's 3 times 6 times 3? Is that 54? So I have 54 times uh, 3x plus 4 squared. That is the, that's just the first derivative. So, wow, what's the second derivative going to be? Well, just repeat this process, right? So bring the 2 down. So you have 2 times 54 times 3x plus 4. Subtract 1 from the exponent. So you just get now an exponent of 1. That's nice. But then don't forget I have to multiply in the derivative of 3x plus 4, which is still 3, okay? So I have to multiply in again, just like I did in the prior uh, step. I have to multiply in the 3. So now I get 6 times 54. Is that 324 uh, times 3x plus 4 to the first power, or just uh, 3x plus 4? So there's the... There is the second derivative. We get a big coefficient here of 324. But the second derivative is uh, still not as complicated as the original uh, function. So this is a case where when you, when you take derivatives, you get easier function, not harder function uh, than the um, original one. OK, well, we're out of time. So I've still got a couple of examples uh, of uh, uh, using the chain rule. Again, it's just finding second derivatives, but the chain rule is going to be involved. All right, so I know conceptually the chain rule is a little bit challenging until you uh, start practicing with it uh, in the homework. So as soon as you finish your, um, as soon as you finish your homework for tonight, the product and quotient rule homework, uh, then you should start on that chain rule homework. It's, it's pretty lengthy, but I think it does take a lot of uh, examples to uh, sort of uh, uh, get a good understanding of the a uh, chain rule. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, well, we're done for today. So uh, we're almost finished with the chain rule. Um, so that's, we, we made pretty good progress. Uh, thanks for uh, your cooperation. Y'all, y'all answered my questions really well today. So um, that's good. Um, sorry to have to, uh, as usual, have to call on you, but that's, that's just the way I do it. <laughs> and there's reasons for that. Uh, that actually is uh, 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 well known to uh, be effective. So that's why I do it. Um, okay. Um, I'll see y'all guys on Thursday then, right? Today's Tuesday. Okay. So I'll see y'all on Thursday. Thank you. Have a good day. couple of days. Sounds good. See you guys on Thursday.